The intent of this video is to discuss the effectiveness of the B-29 bomber's integrated defensive gun system. The B-29s were armed with 12 Browning M2 50 caliber machine guns mounted in five turrets. The turrets were electrically powered and operated by the bomber's gunners. The gunners were located at one of the five crew sighting stations. A 20 millimeter tail cannon was initially adopted, but later removed due to weight, limited 125 round ammo capacity, and ballistic differences between the 20 millimeter projectiles and the 50 caliber bullets. The turrets were operated by the bomber gunners sighting, tracking, and firing at attacking fighter interceptors with an optical pedestal gun sight. The integrated gun system was designed by General Electric. A computer connected the gun sight to the turret. There were five computers on the B-29. The vacuum tube analog computers weighed around 125 pounds. The computers calculated a ballistic solution for the turret's guns, accounting for bullet drop, deflection, lead, and parallax. A parallax correction is needed since the distance from the gunner's sighting station to the turret could be up to 41 feet. This chart shows the parallax dimensions between the B-29 sighting stations and the turrets. The computer also accounts for the effects the atmosphere will have on the ballistic solution. The atmospheric parameters are input by the navigator with this instrument. This includes barometric altitude in feet, indicated air speed in miles per hour, and outside air temperature in degrees centigrade. The gun sight incorporated gyroscopes and position sensors to feed the data into the gun computer system. If an interceptor is spotted, the gunner would call out the threat and request turret control from the fire control officer. The gunner would dial in the fighter's wingspan into the target size knob. The gun sight target knob can be adjusted for an interceptor's wingspan between 35 feet and 150 feet. Gunners memorized wingspans of expected interceptors. For example, the wingspan of a Japanese Zero is 39 feet. The gunner would track the interceptor by looking through the gun sight's illuminated optical head. The gunner could rotate the gun sight in azimuth and elevation. He would place the gun sight center bead on the target and continually frame the interceptor's wingtips with the reticle's outer ring. This data provides the interceptor's range distance into the computer. He was instructed to maintain a sight base of 2 inches and keep both eyes open when targeting and tracking. The gunner's left hand operated the left side spline hand wheel which rotated the optical head in azimuth and elevation. His left hand also engaged the gun sight spring-loaded action switch or dead man lever. If the switch is released, the gun sight circuit would be cut. His left thumb operated the machine gun's trigger. The gunner's right hand operated the sight's right side inner azimuth and elevation smooth hand wheel. The smaller outer splined right wheel rotated independently and controlled the diameter of the illuminated reticle circular dots for target framing. His right thumb operated the spring-loaded push-to-talk comp switch. His right thumb also engaged the machine gun triggers. The gun sight adopted flip-down sky filters to help in viewing and tracking targets in a bright sky. The gunner would just smoothly track the interceptor, continually framing its wingtips, and when in range, open fire with short 1-2 to two second bursts. Depending on the sighting station, he could control up to three turrets simultaneously. There were 21 different sighting station turret combinations available on the B-29 bomber. The effective range of the B-29 gun system was 900 yards. The effective range for most enemy fighter interceptors is 400 yards. This gives the B-29 gunners a 500 yard firing advantage. The bomber gunners could open fire at longer distances for head-on attacks given the faster closing speeds. Other advantages of the gun system are the guns are located away from the sighting stations. The gunners do not experience the noise, vibrations, and recoil of conventional flexible mounted machine guns. The B-29 bomber crew members also did not need to wear cumbersome insulated clothing since the B-29s were pressurized, insulated, and heated. Each gun was belt fed with 500 rounds per gun. 
The B-29's ammo consisted of 100% 50 caliber armor-piercing incendiary cartridges. The B-29's did not use tracers in the ammo mix, although there were reports of B-29's adopting headlight tracers in the ammo mix to ward off Japanese interceptors. This April 1945 chart outlines the quantity of ammunition needed and used per month by the 21st Bomber Command. B-29s were expected to consume 3,851,000 linked armor-piercing incendiary rounds in May 1945. Japanese interceptors were very vulnerable to this cartridge, as their airframes were more fragile, less armored, and only some models adopted self-sealing fuel tanks. The B-29 turrets also incorporated fire cutoff interrupters and camp following features to keep from shooting your own airplane. This feature did not apply to the bomb bay door though. The spent cartridges and metal links would be jettisoned overboard on the lower turrets and tail turret. The spent cartridges and metal links would be retained on the upper turrets. This chart shows a distribution of Japanese interceptor attacks. 46% of the B-29's interceptor attacks were from the head-on direction. These were the most frequent direction of attack. To deal with this threat, the forward upper turret was modified to incorporate two additional machine guns. This document outlines the weight and drag increase of adding two additional machine guns to the top forward turret. Two additional machine guns and associated systems increased the bomber's weight by 880 pounds. To maintain the same range, 260 pounds of fuel will be needed to carry the extra 880 pounds of armament. An additional 660 pounds of bombs will need to be converted to fuel to account for the additional aerodynamic drag of adding two extra machine guns. An 1800 pound reduction in bomb load is needed to meet the range requirements accounting for the modified four gun turrets additional 880 pound weight and aerodynamic parasitic drag. The gun guts have been removed from this B-29's upper turret for cleaning. You can tell by seeing through the barrel shroud cooling holes. The ground crew is transporting the gun inner guts for cleaning. The M2's casing group stays with the turret. This chart shows a cutaway of the B-29's aft pressurized compartment. The right gunner sighting station plexiglass dome is here. The fire control officer is sitting in the barber chair. The right gunner sighting station plexiglass dome is here. The bombardier will unstow the gun sight. The gun sight will swing out on a pantograph arm. The bombardier can operate only the forward upper and lower turrets. The gun sight limits are 80 degrees up and down, 140 degrees to the left, and 185 degrees to the right. All turrets rotate with a speed of 360 degrees in 8 seconds and can elevate 90 degrees in 3 seconds. The side blister gunners can operate the lower forward and lower aft turrets. They cannot operate the upper turrets. They could also operate the tail turret if the tail gunner is disabled. The gun sight limits are 60 degrees up, 90 degrees down, 105 degrees to the right, and 105 degrees to the left. The upper crown ring sight gunner can only operate the upper forward and upper aft turrets. This station is where the fire control officer sits on the barber chair. To rotate the ring sight, he shimmies his feet on the barber chair's base. The gun sight limits are 90 degrees up and 5 degrees down. The tail gunner is isolated from the rest of the crew in a pressurized compartment. His sighting station limits are 60 degrees up, 90 degrees down, and 105 degrees left right. All of the sighting station limits exceed the turret limits. This allows for interceptor tracking beyond the turret's arc travel. The forward upper turret can traverse 360 degrees in rotation. The turret can elevate 90 degrees up and 5 degrees down. The lower forward turret can traverse 360 degrees in rotation and 5 degrees up and 90 degrees down. Converging crossfire of the forward upper turret and the lower forward turret occurs at 200 yards. 
The upper aft turret can traverse 360 degrees rotation. The turret can elevate 90 degrees up and 5 degrees down. The lower aft turret can traverse 360 degrees in rotation. The turret can elevate 5 degrees up and 90 degrees down. The tail turret has a more restrictive arc travel. It can traverse only 30 degrees up, 30 degrees down, 30 degrees to the right, and 30 degrees to the left. Let's now review some data on the effectiveness of the B-29's gun system. There were six major bombing phases of the B-29s in World War II, as outlined in this summary chart. The nighttime, low-altitude, incendiary firebombing of Japanese urban areas occurred in Phase 3. 25% of all B-29 bombing missions were in Phase 3. This declassified July 20, 1945 report indicates that Japanese fighters were never really a threat during night operations, except over Tokyo. The data shows that of the 8,473 bombers deployed during night operations, only three B-29s were shot down by fighters, while bomber gunners claimed 41 fighters destroyed. The B-29's nighttime air-to-air -air kill ratio equates to 13.7. An enemy plane is considered destroyed when it meets the following criteria as shown in this chart. Seen to crash, seen to disintegrate or be enveloped by flames, captured in friendly territory, or the pilot bailed out. All of the B-29 turrets adopted cameras for post-mission evaluation and kill verification. During World War II, the Imperial Japanese Army and Navy were credited with shooting down 83 B-29s in air-to-air -air combat. Ten of the 83 bombers were destroyed by ramming. This chart outlines a tabular data of B-29 combat losses in World War II for both the 20th and 21st Bomber Commands. The column EA are the bomber losses due to enemy aircraft. The sum of B-29 losses due to air-to-air -air combat equates to 83. The bomber gunners, on the other hand, were credited with destroying 969 Japanese fighters in air-to-air -air combat. The basis for this value is within the reference shown and the tabular data provided. The B-29s ended World War II with an air-to-air -air kill ratio of 11.7 to 1, while the P-51 Mustangs ended World War II with an air-to-air -air kill ratio of 11 to 1. The B-29s World War II air-to-air -air kill ratio exceeds the P-51 Mustangs World War II air-to-air -air kill ratio. Another consideration is the competency of Japanese fighter pilots. By the time the B-29s were deployed, the Japanese seasoned pilot ranks were depleted. The Battle of Midway, the Guadalcanal Campaign, and the Battle of the Philippine Sea decimated the Japanese pilot corps. The x-axis of this chart is month and year. The y-axis is the average flight hours experience of the Imperial Japanese Navy pilot. The solid line represents the average experience level of the Japanese pilot. B-29 started Phase 1 bombing operations in June 1944 from China. By this time, Japanese pilot experience level is but a fraction of the first-generation pilots. Also notice that the Japanese were massing suicide kamikaze pilots to stop the expected invasion landing on Kyushu coming November 1945. This chart represents the average experience level of the Imperial Japanese Army pilots. The trend is clear, though. The B-29 bomber gunners were engaging Japanese Navy or Army interceptor pilots with much lower experience level than the first-generation seasoned pilots. This March 1945 summary report outlines a fighter-bomber engagement. During this mission, Japanese fighters opened fire on bombers in 43% of encounters with B-29s. B-29 bomber gunners opened fire in 83% of encounters with fighters. 58% of Japanese interceptors started shooting at distances beyond 1,000 yards. The report observes that this is due to poor pilot ability. Because of the diminishing fighter threat, Bomber Command was including only the tail turret, the aft upper turret, and the aft lower turret in some of the bombers dispatched. 
This August 14, 1945 mission summary chart outlines which wings would be armed, which turrets would be loaded, and the quantity of rounds per gun. This mission occurred five days after the atomic bombing of Nagasaki. Note that the B-29's computerized gun system failure was only 1.2% for this mission. Fighter escort was available from April 1945 after the capture of Iwo Jima. This chart outlines the impact of fighter escorts. Bomber Command estimated bomber losses dropped by 20 to 30 percent when escorted. In summary, the B-29 gun system was very effective in World War II with the caveat that enemy experience was not at first tier. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider commenting, liking, or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.